Look at Psalm 33, verse 5. Psalm 33, verse 5. What to do when life's not fair? What to do when life's not fair? Let me tell you something. Life isn't fair. And we have to wake up and face it. We have to realize it's not fair when one child is born with a disability while another child is born with supernatural ability. It's not fair when one lady gets a husband that really treats her right and when, then when somebody has to be married to me. That's not fair. <laughs> Life's not fair when some people are born in America and some people are born in Haiti in the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere. Life's not fair when one person has a door open wide to them without them having to lift a finger and another person has a door slammed shut in their face. Life's not fair when you've been divorced, betrayed, lied about, cheated on. Life's not fair when we get to enjoy the bounty of a nation that's been so blessed in so many ways, and yet so many people, they did a, 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 a recent survey, Gallup, some, uh, or I don't know, Gallup poll or some, so, some sort of poll, I can't remember which, which poll it was, but they did a survey, a worldwide survey of how many are unhappy where you live and would like to move and it was like billions, it was like a, a billion people wanted to move and most of them wanted to move here to America. And who wouldn't? If you've lived in another place in this world and if you've lived under socialism and if you've lived under communism and if you've lived where there's poverty abounding everywhere, if you've lived where prosperity is an exception rather than a goal, where poverty is commonplace. If you've been to some of these places, I've been to some of the poorest places in the world. I've been to Mozambique, probably the poorest nation in the world. Most people can't even pronounce it, let alone realize how poverty stricken a place like this is. It was so hard. It was hard for me to even be there and to experience this many years ago. I've been to Haiti many times, I've been to other poor countries around the world. And it's, it's unfair. Life is not fair. And you cannot be the arbiter of trying to equalize everything. Nor can our government, nor can our nation. We can't make life fair for everybody. We can't make life fair for the people that are trying to cross the border. We can't make it fair for everybody who's waiting in line for, to, for immigration and others that just cross the line. Listen, it's not fair. I get it. It's not fair. You've been waiting in line for years and somebody else just crosses and, and gets asylum. I can't explain all that. I'm not defending any of that. I'm not preaching against it. I'm not preaching for it. I am telling you, life is not fair. Sometimes life's not fair for women. Sometimes life's not fair for men. Sometimes life's not fair for black folks. Sometimes life's not fair for white folks. Sometimes life's not fair for Hispanic people. Sometimes life's not fair for any people. And the sooner we get a hold of it, that, that an unfair life is no respecter of persons. The sooner we can start asking ourselves, okay, what do we do about it? Like I said, it's not fair when one child is born sick. It's not fair that one set of parents can have five or six or seven or eight children and another set of parents has been believing God and trying to have children for years and decades and can't get pregnant. It's not fair that a child is born with autism. It's not fair when the doctor says it's cancer. It's not fair when the banker says that's four months of missed payments, we got to come take your house. It's not fair. Life's not fair. Life's not fair. But what are we going to do about it? God has given us something to do about it. Listen, it's not we are, we must not become Christian ostriches who just stick our head in the sand and pretend that the bad in this world doesn't exist. We there is bad in this world. 
There is evil in this world and there are bad people in this world and there are bad things in this world and there are bad things that happen in this world. But the, mo but the most important thing in your life and the most important thing about you is what you believe when something bad happens. What you believe when something bad happens. I tried to mention this, talk about this a little last time we were together, but what you believe when something bad happens. Look, some people believe when something bad happens, they deserve it. Some people believe when something bad happens, that's God judging them. Some people believe, believe when something bad happens, that's because the universe is paying them back. Some people believe that when something bad happens, it's because, it's because God's holding a grudge against them. It's that God's not forgiven them, that they are not equal in the sight of God. And we have all these theologies and all these religions that we make up when life's not fair, but God has given us a way better way of responding to life when life's not fair. And here it starts right here in this verse. Look at what it says. He says, he loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The earth is full. Everybody say the earth is full, the earth is full. of the goodness of the Lord. But you know what? If your source of information is the media, if your source of information about what's going on in the world is the news, then you, you would say the earth is full of evil. The earth is full of bad people. The earth is full of bad politicians. The earth is full of bad government. And the earth has plenty of that, but we must realize that the Bible says that goodness will always overcome evil. It says overcome evil with good. And you know what overcomes evil? The goodness of God. The goodness of God. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Man, we need to go into life believing that. We need to wake up every day believing that, that this earth is full of the goodness of God. I get it. If you tune into the news all the time, you're going to be negative. You're going to be skeptical. You're going to feel depressed sometimes. You're going to feel discouraged sometimes. But if you wake Wake up every day with Psalm 33, verse 5 on your mind. Hey, the earth is full of the goodness of God, and I'm walking on this earth. And you know what? When you go forward, you're in the earth. You're going to run into some goodness. If you fall backwards on this earth, you are going to run into some goodness. I believe the earth is full of the goodness of God. When I'm moving forward and making all the right decisions and doing well, I'm going to bump into some goodness. And even when I stumble, and even when I blow it, and even when I make mistakes, I'm not saying that God, I'm not saying that I I should ignore that and be irresponsible. What I'm saying is even when I stumble, even when I fall, the earth is so full of the goodness of the Lord that somehow, some way, God's going to turn it around. Not because I repented. Not because I'm so holy. Not because I'm so godly. I am not always those things. And neither the heck are you. But the earth is full of the goodness of God. Amen. I have fallen flat on my face countless times. But you know what I fall on? Earth. And you know what earth is full of? The goodness of God. I've been knocked backwards countless times, fallen on my butt. And you know what I fall on? Earth. And you know what earth is full of? The goodness of God. What you believe when something bad happens is the most important thing about you. It's the most important thing about you. Hey, you look real pretty today, ladies. Hey, guys, man, you look handsome. Handsome little angels. Almost called you a devil. <laughs> But that's not the most important thing about you. Your degree, not the most important thing about you. Your job, not the most important thing about you. Your career, not the most. How much money you have, not the most important thing about you. Your health, not even the most important thing about you. What you believe when something bad happens. That's the most important thing about you. And so I want to equip you with how to believe in the goodness of God even when bad happens because life is not fair. People will wrong you. The devil will wrong you. Life will wrong you. You will wrong you. But my God, my God will right every wrong. He will right every wrong. Why? Because he's good. 
And that's what a good God does. That's what a good God does. And God is not good to you because you're good. God is good to you because God is good. You think about most of how you treat people. We don't always treat people right. But usually you treat people a certain way because of who you are. Not because of who they are. Now, sometimes we blow it and sometimes we blow our stack and sometimes we man. You put me in the Portillo's window and you tell me, I'm sorry, your food's not ready. Go park in space C on the other side of the parking lot. I am not walking in the spirit at that moment. I'm in the flesh and I want my fries. I, and, I'm, and I'll be honest with you, man, I am not the pastor when I'm in that when I'm in that line. <laughs> Except when they say, hey, pastor. <laughs> I'm like, uh, which space did you say that I need to go to? <laughs> but as soon as I can detect that they cannot recognize me, I'm like, no. It's a psychology thing with me because I know that when I move, they're going to number one, they OK, they, the pressure is off of them to cook my stuff. <laughs> they're trying to take care of the person behind me. Now, I'm now, now while I'm driving, they're taking care of three people that just go right by me while I'm finding the space. <laughs> like, what? So I just say, no, I'll just wait right here. <laughs> I'm not encouraging you to do that. <laughs> I'm just confessing my faults before you pray for me that I would be healed. So I just, uh, you know, I just, I, I, you know, I thought, well, you know, this isn't working. So, um, you know, I, I'm not getting this right. I, uh, something's got to change. I started going to bone of beef. Um, <laughs> We don't deserve God's goodness because we're good. That's not an excuse to be bad. It's to take the pressure off of you and get your focus on what to believe when something bad happens. And with every fiber in your being, I want to encourage you to believe that God will right every wrong. I'm going to tell you what to do. Number one, believe, like we said, we talked about this last week, believe that God will right every wrong. Believe. Look, because if you don't believe that, bitterness is going to fill the vacuum of your heart. Whatever, if, whatever you believe is going to determine the outcome of your life. It's going to determine the attitude of your life. You see, we have to realize what we are in control of. We are not always in control of everything that happens in our day. We're not in control of what other people do or how other people treat us. But we are in control of what we believe. We are in control of the words we speak. We are in control of the attitude we choose. We are in control of the decisions we make. And therefore, no one has the power to alter your destiny when you realize that it's your choice, it's your belief. I remember somebody came to me, a preacher came to me uh, uh, a few years ago and said, you know, back in the day, you know, uh, uh, many, many years ago, you did something to me and that altered the course of my destiny forever. And I thought, that right there is the greatest mistake anybody can ever make. I am not that powerful that I could alter your destiny forever. I'm not taking credit for you fulfilling your destiny and I'm not taking any blame for you failing to fulfill your destiny. So I'm just going to go to bed at peace tonight. <laughs> with my hot dog and fries. <laughs> Chili dog with onions, please. <laughs> because I am not the mama 
of your drama. And I am not responsible for the choices you make. I am responsible for what I teach you, but you are responsible for what you listen to. Boy, we get a hold of this, man. There's so much peace. There's so much peace. Like the earth is full of the goodness of God. Like that's my focus. I'm focused on I'm going to bump into some goodness. I might bump into you and still bump into some goodness. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just playing with you. But look, life's not fair. Life's not fair. Why does some why does somebody lose their dad? When they're seven years old, why does somebody lose their mom? Why does some, that's not fair. Right, that's right. So what do we do? We have to believe in the goodness of God. We have to believe we're going to bump into the goodness somehow. We're going to bump into some goodness somehow. Why does somebody get shot in our city? It's not fair. Somebody is shot. They're driving down the street and they get shot. They're in a drive-by shooting. That is not fair. I hate it. But there's something we can do about it. We can make sure that we believe. We choose to believe somehow, some way. The goodness of God is going to show up. Somehow, some way. This is going to turn into something good. Somehow, some way. God's going to turn this thing around. He turns things around for his glory and for good. And we've got to believe in the God of the turnaround. We've got to believe that God is in the turnaround business. Let me tell you something about what God turns around. God turned the Nile into blood. God turned the sea into dry land. God turned the curse into blessing. God turned sorrow into joy. God turns grief into dancing. God turns five loaves and two fish into feeding a multitude. God turns dead bodies to resurrected bodies. Jesus Christ is your turnaround king. He knows how to turn something bad into something good. And somehow you're going to have to dig deep and believe when something bad happens that somehow God's going to right every wrong. He's going to right every wrong. He's going to right the wrong. He is going, listen to me, he's going to right the wrongs that people have done to you. Genesis 50, verse 20, must become a... It's not just, oh, Pastor, come on. Do you, do you have anything else to preach about? Do you got any other scriptures? This is, God, this is life. Genesis 50, 20, jo Joseph says to his brothers, you meant evil against me, but God turned it into good. God meant it for good so that many would be saved. Listen, this is life, people. Joseph received a coat from his father, love from his father, a coat from his father, and a dream from God. He received a coat from his father, and his brother stripped him of it. He received a dream from his, from his heavenly father, and his brothers hated him for it. He received love from his father and hatred from his family members. Let me tell you something. That's what life is like, and it's not fair. And sometimes dreamers are going to be hated, and, and haters hate dreams, and haters hate dreamers, and haters hate people that wear their coat and know that they're the righteousness of God. The devil doesn't like that. Religion doesn't like that. The enemy doesn't like that. Even some Christians don't like it when you believe that you can get up when you've fallen. Too many Christians are kicking you down, kicking you when you're down. And we need to be people that are bending over. The only time we're ever looking down at anybody is when we're bending over to help them up. That's the only time to ever look down at anybody. <laughs> only you can alter your destiny by what you believe when something bad happens, what you believe when there's a detour, what you believe when there's a derailment, what you believe when there's a delay, what you believe when there's a disappointment. That's what matters most is not to try to live a life free from disappointment or free from delays or free from derailment. It's living a life of belief that God is good and the earth is full of the goodness of God and goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And when you believe that, no disappointment can stop you. No derailment can stop you. No jealous brother can stop you. No bad friend can stop you. No betrayal can stop you because God is bigger. He will right every wrong that people have done to you. He will right every wrong. He will right every wrong. He will right every wrong that the enemy has done to you. The Bible says when the thief is found, he must repay sevenfold. Proverbs 631. 
and 32. When the thief is found, he must repay sevenfold. Listen, this is what life's about. This is what life is about. Joseph's thrown in a pit. It doesn't matter how far down people throw you. God is so good, he will always lift you up higher. It doesn't matter what people strip you of. God is so good, he'll clothe you with something better. It doesn't matter how many people lie about you. God is so good, he will turn you he will turn you into interpreter of dreams and he will elevate you to be in command of that company, business, situation, job. Why? Because you believe that somehow, some way, the goodness of God is going to show up. I think about it. If goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, then even if I sometimes make a mistake and go backwards, I'm going to bump into some goodness because it's been following me. Right. Have you ever been in like where somebody's following you and then you stop and they bump into you because they're so close? That's the goodness of God. It's so close. You stop for a second. You might, you might get knocked over by that goodness. You say, oh, that sounds that is so unicorn, Pastor. Oh, this is so idealistic. And so I don't know, is that really real? Well, how about you're going to believe something. You might as well believe in the goodness of God bumping into you. You might as well believe that the earth is full of the goodness of God. You might as well believe. You might as well believe something good, something good, something good is about to happen in your life today. What comes to your mind when something bad happens? That's the most important thing about you, because bitterness comes to many people's mind. And let me tell you something. Bitterness is the evidence that we don't believe in the goodness of God. A pastor visited a 17-year-old kid who had been in and out of the hospital for years because of a shattered back in an accident. I might have told you this before. The young man said, I want you to know, pastor, that I believe God is good and I'm not bitter. The pastor said, how many years have you spent in and out of the hospital, son? He said, 13 years. The pastor looked at him and said, you have spent 13 years of your 17 years in and out of this hospital because of your shattered back, and you still believe that God is good and you're still not bitter? And the 17-year-old boy looked at him and he said, that's right, absolutely, pastor. You know why? Because God has all eternity to make it up to me. Amen. Come on, somebody's got to say Amen. You see, it's all about what we believe when something bad happens. It never produces anything good when we bask in a heart of bitterness. A middle-aged woman in a wheelchair had been very angry with God ever since her only two pregnancies had ended up in miscarriage. A psychiatrist who was counseling her reported this as he was walking her through all of this bitterness in her life. He said in a church communion service, kind of like what we had today, he said in a church communion service, she let go of her anger and her bitterness and prayed for her two children and gave them to the Lord. Suddenly a hot glow penetrated her whole being. She rose to her feet and she walked all the way home out of her wheelchair. Now look, I'm not saying that every single person by getting rid of bitterness is going to walk out of their wheelchair or immediately walk out of their bad situation. But I'm saying every single person needs to walk away from their bitterness, regardless of what the consequences are, regardless of something good will come out of it. Something good, something good will come out of it somehow. Something good will come out of it somehow. Do I have a bug on my jacket or something? It's a big bug because goodness and mercy follow me. That bug must have been planting some gold on my body somewhere or some planting some healing or the bug carrying some health virus for me. Oh, oh, that's cute. Leave it. Oh, that bug knows what's right. That bug knows what's going on. No, 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 don't, don't hurt that bug. <laughs> that bug is riding the goodness train. <laughs> that bug is smart. I want to be around that goodness. I heard Dickow gets goodness everywhere he goes. I want to ride on Dickow's coat. 
Come on with it. I got to name this critter. Let's do a survey. Like, let's name this critter. Who's got a name for him? What is it? Tiffany? Sorry, girl, married. Uh, <laughs> but you look good. Uh, Jiminy? <laughs> All right. Um, still there. You can't shake off the goodness of God. You can't shake off the blessing of God. God is on my side. I come, I do this all day. I come up with scripture after scripture. I don't know. Why are you afraid? Be anxious for nothing. <laughs> God will right every wrong that people have done to you. He will right every wrong that the enemy has done to you. And he will right every wrong that time has done to you. Man, you run into some people sometimes and you're like, man, time has not been good to you. I mean, you might not say it, but you know it, right? Man, time has not been good to that person. Then you run into some people and you're like, man, you, 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 you seem happier and better than 20, 30 years ago. You see, why? What makes that? Because it's what you believe when life's not fair and life is not fair. We can't try to believe it's fair. It's not. But we can believe in the goodness of God that he will right every wrong. The second thing I want you to walk out of here with is to believe that the Lord is your avenger. He is your avenger. Listen, God is your avenger. A widow came to a judge and said, avenge me from the wrong that people have done to me. And he said, absolutely not. Get out of here. Get out of my court. And she kept going to him in Luke chapter 18 and kept going to him and kept going to him. And he continued to refuse to avenge her for what these people had done to her. And, he, and, and the Bible says she kept persisting and to the point where the judge said, I am neither a good judge nor a good person. And yet I am going to avenge her lest she wear me out. And Jesus said, listen to what the unrighteous judge said. Shall not your God avenge you? If this unrighteous judge avenged this lady, shall not your God avenge you? His children who cry to him day and night, shall not God avenge you? Look, I got to tell you something about this, this avenging of God. Look at this scripture. And we'll just put this scripture up. And you can see this for yourself. 2 Samuel 22, verse 48. Look at how powerful this is. We're almost done. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 48. It is God that avenges me and puts the nations under me. It is God who avenges me and puts the nations under me. It is God. Look at 1 Samuel 24, verse 12. He says, may the Lord judge between me and you and may the Lord avenge the wrongs that you have done to me, but my hand will not be against you. He says, the Lord will avenge me, but I will not lift my hand against you. As long as you try to avenge you, God cannot avenge you. When you take your hand off it, God will put his hand on it. Boy, can anybody say amen to that here today? He will right every wrong. What to do when life's not fair? Believe that God is good. Believe he will right every wrong. Believe the Lord is your avenger. Say that. The Lord is my avenger. And the next thing that I want you to do when life's not fair 
is don't freak out when things get worse before they get better. Don't become afraid when things get worse before they get better. Because in Mark chapter 5, verse 22, it says, Jairus came to Jesus and said, My daughter is sick and she's dying. Come and lay hands on her. Verse 23, come and lay hands on her. My daughter is sick. She's dying. She's at the point of death. Come and lay hands on her. So Jesus goes with her, goes with Jairus to, to his daughter. And if you look at verse 35, the daughter dies. Jesus was coming with him, and she died while he was still speaking. Some came to him and said, your daughter is dead. Don't trouble the teacher any further. And Jesus said in verse 36, he said, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler, he said, do not be afraid, only believe. Listen, when things get worse before they get better, see, when things are going good, it's easy to believe. What, we're trying to, what I'm trying to show you is when life's not fair, what do you do? Here's what you do. You don't freak out when things get worse because sometimes they're going to get worse before they get better. Just like sometimes a wound looks worse, a scab gets worse. It looks worse before it heals. It's okay. It's getting better. It's healing itself. Don't worry when things get worse. You start tithing and things get worse. Don't worry. The windows of heaven are opening up soon. You start forgiving and people mistreat you. Don't worry. God's going to back you up. You start treating people right and everybody treats you wrong. Don't worry. God is going to make everything right. God is going to turn it around. He's going to right every wrong. You raised your kids and they don't seem to be turning out all right. Don't you worry. The Bible says if you planted good seeds in them that those seeds are going to come up. Those seeds are going to grow. Don't fret. Don't worry. Your kid's getting worse. Your kid's getting worse. Your kid's getting worse. Your marriage's getting worse. Don't worry. You just keep planting the right seeds. You just keep believing God. You keep trusting God. You keep believing in the goodness of God. Don't make it turn you bitter. Don't let it turn you angry. Make, it, make a deal with God and say, God, I'm giving this to you. I'm trusting you in this situation. And I believe everything's going to be all right. And guess what? You'll live in peace the rest of your life. And while they get their act together, you'll have peace the whole time. Amen. Believe that God's got you. Believe that God got two more things. Believe that God's got you. When things aren't fair, believe that God's got you. Here's a great verse for you. Isaiah 57, verse 14. Look at what it says. Isaiah 57, verse 14. He said, I will remove all the obstacles that are standing in your way. I will remove every obstacle out of the way of my people. God's got you. Say, God's got me. And finally, as we close today, I just would encourage you, give God time. Give him time. Like time is not your enemy. You say, man, I'm running out of time. Are you running out of God? Can you run out of God? Because if you can't run out of God, you can't run out of time. Because God created time. God's bigger than time. God's greater than time. God can in one day turn around years of frustration. The Bible says in Esther chapter 9, verse 1, the very day that the enemy of Israel thought that they would, that they would overcome the Jewish people, God turned it around in um, Esther chapter 9, verse 1. In the very day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to gain mastery over them. Look at what it says in verse 2. God turned it around. It turned to the contrary. It turned around. It turned to the very opposite of what happened. The very thing the enemy thought ended up coming on them. The very day the enemy thinks he's got you, God's got you. God's going to turn it around. Give him time. Give him time. Ecclesiastes 11, Ecclesiastes 3, verse 11, look at what it says. He makes all things beautiful in its time. One translation says, in his time. I got good news for you. Something looking ugly right now in your life? Don't say, yeah, the person in front of me. Is something looking, <laughs> is something looking, looking ugly in your life right now? Give God time. He'll make it beautiful. He'll make it beautiful. Is something looking really bad right now in your life? 
give God time, he'll make it beautiful. How could God turn this divorce? How could God turn this addiction? How could God turn this, what this person did to me? How could God turn what my kids did, what my parents did, what this Christian did to me, what this business partner did to me, what the devil did to me, what the sickness has done to me? Give God time. He will restore the years. He will restore the years. Who needs some years restored? You say, oh, God wouldn't do that. God wouldn't do that for me. I've wasted all these years. God doesn't say he'll restore the years that you haven't wasted. If you haven't wasted them, what's there to restore? We've got to wake up and realize God gives us these promises because he knows we screw up. He knows we've wasted some years. He knows the enemy has devoured some stuff from us. He knows we've made some bad decisions. Give God time. He will restore the years. Joel 2 verse 24 says, verse 25, he said, I will restore the years. I will restore the years to you, to you. They've been eaten. How do you get, how do you get years restored that have been eaten? Somehow God makes it up to you. Somehow. Just give him time. Give him room. Go to bed at night and trust him. He'll make it up while you're sleeping. Wake up in the morning and trust him. You're going to run into some goodness. Get up every day and believe that goodness is following you. Mercy is following you. Something good's going to happen in your life. Get up every day and say, whatever the enemy sent to destroy me, God bent to employ me. Whatever the enemy sends to defeat me, God bends to complete me. We've got to get up every day and believe that God is our turnaround king and he's going to turn your situation around. Get up now and go Bears and get out of here. Yeah. <laughs>